Uh, so here I am, I'm in the piney woodlands, okay, of North Carolina, you know, and I've never even been to the East Coast, I've never been to North Carolina before, I haven't been to the East Coast in eight years, at least eight years, last time I went to New York to get some falafel in Queens at two in the morning and visit some of my favorite pizzerias out there, because I used to live out there, but now I'm in North Carolina, wasn't my choice, it's here for a wedding. Sometimes people do that. I would never personally do that again. But I pulled over in the rental car to go botanize some stuff. Found some nice stuff right here. Uh, right here is a very vulnerable plant. And it's uh, it's vulnerable due to poaching. This is Dianaea uh, muscipula, also known as the uh, Venus flytrap. Uh, endemic to subtropical wetlands of uh, southeastern uh, North America. So southeastern United States. And, uh, you know, I didn't really see what it was. I just saw these little flowers. I saw they look almost like a ranunculus. They're not, of course. It's in the Drosseraceae family, in the order Caryophyllales. But I looked at the flower, and then I looked down here, and I say, what's that? I know what that is. You know what that is, too. They sell them uh, in those little uh, plastic terrariums at the home dustbin. But anyway, just looking underneath this power line easement where there's much more exposure than there would be in uh, the piney, the pine lanes, the piney pine lanes, and uh, they, they have full sun, it's wet soil, uh, wet sandy soil, elevation here is about 150 feet above sea level, it's very flat, and the lack of topography, I have to say, being from the west coast the last 20 years, I'm not used to it, what, what are you doing, you just, alright, anyway, I'm not used to the lack of topography here, uh, these uh, these sandy bottom lands, which of course uh, we're it's it's a dry spell right now. But I guess they haven't had rain in a while. But these are frequently infiltrated with water. Oh look, there's a little Drosera too. Same family, another carnivorous plant. We get a few of these. They call these the sundews. I didn't even see that before. Not sure what what species of Drosera that is, but uh, you could see those little trichomes with glands on them attract insects the bugs get stuck and uh, oh there's one flowering these are very tiny there's a uh, species all over the world there's some species uh, at least in the family in australia that get rather large but these don't get too large another carnivorous plant now why would you need a, to to take up the habit of carnivory of using insects for your nitrogen acquisition uh, in a habitat like this. Well, that's because the soil is so acidic and so nutrient poor that uh, you gotta you gotta get that nitrogen somehow. Look at this. Look at these guys. Just more of a Venus flytrap right there. Can't even see their. Uh... There you go. So that was it. That was pretty uh, special to walk up on it. Also seen a nice species of uh, I don't know what species of orchid it was. Have to have Brandon Quarter ID it. Look at these dainty little bastards. They, they're not even, you can't even see their leaves yet. AKA their phyllodes. But these are all Venus flytraps right here. And of course, this species is under threat from poaching. But here you can see where disturbance, okay, AAA creating the, uh, AKA creating the, uh, you know, the, the easement for the power lines is it opened, opened up the sun for them and created a little microhabitat. So it's kind of interesting, uh, you know, to see there's sometimes plants that thrive in disturbance. So, uh, well, that's that. I'm going to get back to what I'm doing, getting bit by flies and sweating my ass off.